Hello ESS, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Brenda. If you would like to join my little community of BSS, please go ahead and subscribe down below. Also turn on your post notifications, that way you do not miss when I post another video like this one. And if you end up enjoying this video whatsoever, also don't forget to give it a thumbs up on your way out. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Alright guys, I hope that you guys are comfy, that you got your snacks, and that you are ready to listen to some scary stories to tell in the dark. As you guys could tell by the title, that is what I'm going to be doing today. I am going to be reading to you guys from my book, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. And obviously this is the first book of the collection. It has this really cool holographic... Um, cover to it. I got this one um, from Half Price Books. I used to own all of them, all three books, when I was younger. I do not know where they went, but I went and hunted them down um, like a year ago at Half Price Books, and now I bought one of them. I didn't get all of them. I was just like, I'll just get the OG one because it has some of my favorite scary stories in it and if you guys didn't watch my highways haunted highways of california video i had like a whole little um story on how i used to read these books with a flashlight when we would go on road trips to california and it was one of my favorite things to do and the pictures the illustration in these books have scared me since i was little to this day while i was picking out what stories I was gonna read for this video I was like looking through it I was getting scared and I'm also filming this at midnight it's 12 30 and yeah so I'm gonna have a fun time trying to go to sleep so you guys better give it a thumbs up for me doing this for you guys but anyway I do love reading these books so I am going to tell you guys one um, first one story that let me know in the comments if this, the plot of this story sounds familiar to you guys at all. It is one of my favorite stories and also a movie that really gives me the heebie-jeebies just because... Oh, you'll see. If you, if you guys know what movie it's from, let me know in the comments. Okay, so it is called The Babysitter. And this is what the illustration shows. Creepy creepy guy holding a baby <laughs> okay here we go it was nine o'clock in the evening everybody was sitting on the couch in front of the TV there were Richard Brian Jenny and Doreen the babysitter the telephone rang maybe it's your mother said Doreen she picked up the phone before she could say a word, a man laughed hysterically and hung up. Who was it? asked Richard. Some nut, said Doreen. What did I miss? At 9.30, the telephone rang again. Doreen answered it. It was the man who had called before. I'll be there soon, he said, and he laughed and hung up. Who was it? the children asked. Some crazy person, she said. About 10 o'clock, the telephone rang again. Jenny got to it first. Hello, she said. It was the same man. One more hour, he said, and he laughed and hung up. He said, one more hour, what did he mean, asked Jenny. Don't worry, said Doreen, it's somebody fooling around. I'm scared, said Jenny. About 10.30, the telephone rang once more. When Doreen picked it up, the man said, Pretty soon now, and he laughed. Why are you doing this? Doreen screamed, and he hung up. Was it that guy again? asked Brian. Yes, said Doreen. I'm going to call the operator and complain. The operator told her to call back if it happened again, and she would try to trace the call. At 11 o'clock, the telephone rang again. Doreen answered it. Very soon now, the man said, and he laughed and hung up. Doreen called the operator, 
Almost at once, she called back. That person is calling from a telephone upstairs, she said. You'd better leave. I'll get the police. Just then, a door upstairs opened. A man they had never seen before started down the stairs towards them. As they ran from the house, he was smiling in a very strange way. A few minutes later, the police found him there and arrested him. And that was it. So if you guys know where that movie's from, it's pretty obvious, but I really like that story. It has always creeped me out, especially that line that they used in the movie where it's like, he's calling from inside the house. That shit creeped me out. I would always get really scared because I also used to babysit when I was younger. I would babysit like neighborhood, neighborhood kids and stuff. So that story has always really, really creeped me out. Okay, now the other one I wanted to read to you guys was the Wendigo. This one here. I think that's how you pronounce it. Wendigo? The Wendigo? I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> My foot's falling asleep. Ow! <laughs> okay. Here we go. A wealthy man wanted to go hunting in a part of northern Canada where few people had ever hunted. He traveled to a trading post and tried to find a guide to take him. But no one would do it. It was too dangerous, they said. Finally, he found a Native American who needed money badly, and he agreed to take him. The Native American's name was Defago. They made camp in the snow near a large frozen lake. For three days they hunted, but they had nothing to show for it. The third night, a windstorm came up. They lay in their tent listening to the wind howling and the trees whipping back and forth. To see the storm better, the hunter opened the tent flap. What he saw startled him. There wasn't a breath of air stirring, and the trees were standing perfectly still. Yet he could hear the wind howling, and the more he listened, the more it sounded as if it were calling Defago's name. Defago. Defago? Defago's name. Defago. Oh, Defago. That's how you say it. Defago, it called. Defago. I must be losing my mind, the hunter thought. But Defago had gotten out of his sleeping bag. He ha was cuddled in a corner of the tent, his head buried in his arms. What's this all about? the hunter asked. It's nothing, he said, but the wind continued to call to him, and Defago became more tense and more restless. Defago, it called. Defago. Suddenly, he jumped to his feet and he began to run from the tent, but the hunter grabbed him and wrestled him to the ground. You can't leave me out here, the hunter shouted. Then the wind called again, and Defago broke loose and ran into the darkness. The hunter could hear him screaming as he went. Again and again he cried, Oh, my fiery feet, my burning feet of fire. Then his voice faded away, and the wind died down. At daybreak, the hunter followed Defago's tracks in the snow. They went through the woods, down toward the lake, then out onto the ice. But soon he noticed something strange. The steps Defago had taken got longer and longer. They were so long, no human being could have taken them. It was as if something had helped him to hurry away. The hunter followed the tracks out to the middle of the lake, but there they disappeared. At first, he thought that Defago had fallen through the ice, but there wasn't any hole. Then he thought that something had pulled him off the ice into the sky, but that made no sense. And he stood wondering what happened. The wind picked up again. Soon it was howling as it had the night before. Then he heard Defago's voice. It was coming from up above. And again he heard Defago screaming, My fiery feet, my burning feet. But there was nothing to be seen. Now the hunter wanted to leave that place as fast as he could. He went back to camp and packed. Then he left some food for Defago and he started out. Weeks later, he reached civilization. 
The following year, he went back to hunt in that area again. He went to the same trading post to look for the guide. The people there could not explain what had happened to Defago that night, but they had not seen him since then. Maybe it was the Wendigo, one of them said, and he laughed. It's supposed to come with the wind. It drags you along at great speed until your feet are burned away, and more of you than that. Then it carries you into the sky and it drops you. It's just a crazy story, but that's what some of the Native Americans say. A few days later, the hunter was at the trading post again. A Native American came in and sat by the fire. He had a blanket wrapped around him, and he wore his hat so you couldn't see his face. The hunter thought there was something familiar about him. He walked over and he asked, Are you DeFago? The Native American didn't answer. Do you know anything about him? No answer. He began to wonder if something was wrong, if the man needed help, but he couldn't see his face. Are you all right? He asked. No answer. To get a look at him, he lifted the Native American's hat, then he screamed. There was nothing under the hat but a pile of ashes. Ooh, spooky! I love hearing stories about Wendigos, which is um, a Native American folktale sort of thing. And also, I had to... I paused every time that I said Native American because I had to change it from... because they used the term Indian instead of Native American, so that's why I would stumble and just wanted to um, clarify that real quick because I didn't want to say that term. Okay, but that one's a good one. I always love hearing about th those legends, as also with like skinwalkers and stuff, it's super interesting to me. Okay, now the last one. Ah! My heart jumped! This <laughs> The picture of the last one that I want to read is one of the ones that scare me the most and especially the illustration more than the story itself so so I'm scared I don't even want to look at it okay this one is called the haunted house one time a preacher went to see if he could put a haunt to rest at a house in his settlement the house had been haunted for about 10 years several people had tried to stay there all night but they always would get scared out by the haunt. So this preacher took his Bible and went to the house, went on in, built himself a good fire, and lit a lamp, sat there reading the Bible. Then just before midnight, he heard something start up in the cellar, walking back and forth, back and forth. Then it sounded like somebody was trying to scream and got choked off. Then there was a lot of thrashing around and struggling, and finally, everything got quiet. The old preacher took up his Bible again, but before he could start reading, he heard footsteps coming up the cellar stairs. He sat watching the door to the cellar, and the footsteps kept coming closer and closer. He saw the doorknob turn, and when the door began to open, he jumped up and hollered, What do you want? The door shut back easy-like, and then there wasn't a sound. The preacher was trembling a little, but he finally opened the Bible and read a while. Then he got up and laid the book on the chair and went to mending the fire. Then the haunt started walking again, and step, step, step up the cellar stairs. The old preacher sat watching the door, saw the doorknob turn, and the door open. It looked like a young woman. He backed up and said, Who are you? What do you want? Okay, the picture shows up in the next one, so I'm scared. I'm going to show you guys. Okay, ready? My camera literally died, like, as soon as I was about to show you the illustration that really freaks me out. It was so creepy, it scared me. I didn't like it. But I know it's because I, I kept looking at my battery percentage and I was like it's gonna die any second now and it happened right as soon as I was like okay and then it just died and I was like oh my god I had to like close the book and I was like nope it's just like sitting here waiting for it to charge a little bit so I can wrap the video up but anyway let me find it now I like skim through this book every time and it like gives me a heart attack I'm honestly I have been scared of it since I can remember it Ugh. 
Where is it? Ah! <laughs> I used to read this, like, that part of the story with it folded like this so I couldn't see it. I, I was that scared of it. But anyway. Here you go. I hate it. It's so creepy. I don't like it. I don't want to look at it anymore. Okay, I'm going to finish this story so I can go ahead and wrap the video up because I'm getting scared now. Like, the wind keeps making my window rattle and I'm, I'm scared now. I don't even want to look at it. <laughs> I don't want to touch the book anymore. <laughs> I'm such a scaredy cat. Okay, so it says, The haunt sort of swayed like she didn't know what to do. Then she just faded out. The old preacher waited, waited, and when he didn't hear any more noises, he went over and shut the door. He was sweating and trembling all over, but he was a brave man and he thought he'd be able to see it through. So he turned his chair to where he could watch, and he sat down and waited. It wasn't long before he heard the haunt, the haunt start up again, slowly. Step, 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 closer and closer, step, step, and it was right at the door. The preacher stood up and held his Bible out before him. Then the knob slowly turned and the door opened wide. This time the preacher spoke quiet like. He said, In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, who are you and what do you want? The haunt came right across the room, straight to him, and took hold of his coat. It was a young woman, about 20 years old. Her hair was torn and tangled, and the flesh was dropping off her face, so he could see the bones and part of her teeth. She had no eyeballs, but there was a sort of blue light way back in her eye sockets, and she had no nose to her face. Then she started talking. It sounded like her voice was coming and going with the wind blowing it. She told how her lover had killed her for her money and buried her in the cellar. She said if the preacher could dig up her bones and bury her properly, she could rest. Then she told him to take the end joint of the little finger from her left hand and to lay it in the collection. I don't want to look at the picture. i got to turn the page. At, at plate, the collection plate at the next church meeting and he'd find out who had murdered her. And she said, if you come back here once more after that, you'll hear my voice at midnight and I'll tell you where my money is hid, and you can give it to the church. The haunt sobbed like she was tired, and she sunk down toward the floor and was gone. The preacher found her bones and buried them in the graveyard. The next Sunday, the preacher put the finger bone in the collection plate, and when a certain man happened to touch it, it stuck to his hand. The man jumped up and rubbed and scraped and tore at the bone, trying to get it off. Then he went to screaming like he was going crazy. Well, he confessed to the murder, and they took him on to jail. After the man was hung... Oh. <laughs> you will hide. This is a children's book. Are you sure? <laughs> the preacher went back to that house one midnight, and the haunt's voice told him to dig under the hearth, the hearth rock. He did, and he found a big sack of money. And where that haunt had held on to his coat, the print of those bony fingers had burned right into the cloth. It never did come out. Woo, y'all. I don't know why, but these, these stories are so good and they are so spooky. I really, really enjoyed reading these again because it has been a minute since I have touched this book. So I really hope that you guys like those three stories. And I just wanted to do three for this video just to kind of get a vibe on whether you guys enjoy this sort of video or not or if I should even bother making another one. So please, please, please give me your feedback in the comments below. Let me know if you did enjoy this type of video and if you would like me to continue reading more stories from this book because this was really fun and it was a little bit different from my other videos obviously. I'm still reading off of something but I love these stories and I love scary stories to tell in the dark 
It is, has just always been one of my favorite scary books to read as a kid and it gives me a lot of nostalgia, brings back a lot of memories and it really sets the sort of vibe that I feel like a lot of us could relate to and it just takes us back to when we were younger. But yeah, I really enjoyed this and I hope that you did too. Again, let me know down in the comments below. And before I do end today's video, the comment shout out goes to this person right here. Thank you so much for leaving a nice comment. As always, I really, really do appreciate it. And if you want to be the next comment shout out, all you have to do is leave me a nice comment below, of course. And that's it. That is going to be it for today's video. I appreciate every single one of you and I love you guys so much. Hopefully I will see you in my next one. Don't forget to stay safe and be kind. Bye-bye.